yeah, I've got a scrapbook of like a whole bunch of images here I've organized to show you guys, and it's kind of like a couple different talks I've done over time with some new images added in. Um, so I'm going to start off showing a video example of some recent work, um, going back to the show I had in 2014 at the Macintosh Gallery, just to give an example of some of the work and the environment I tried to create in there. And the sound towers here. The module that you hold in your hand uh, makes noise and when you place it on top of the sound tower, the sound tower, the module stops making noise and the sound tower starts making different noises. Um, there's a few different sounds inside so when you take it off it makes a different sound and starts another. The sounds come from a wave shield uh, that works with an Arduino. Um, the different actions are triggered through magnets and magnet sensitive switches. There's also uh, motion sensitive ping sensors that trigger different sounds as you walk around the piece too. So as you walk up the fort, uh, you can walk on top of the fort and there's one final wall mounted sound sculpture and the module interacts with it also. The tones of this one are a little bit louder and brighter. In a sense you're kind of bringing the sound around with the mobile module there. There's a bag of candy. Uh, these particular ones are butterscotch. You can send them down into the mouth of this character here. And the candy comes out the back of the character. People are encouraged to eat the candy and leave the wrappers on the floor if they want. Um, I'll show you this piece I made. I had a residency in Banff at the Art Center there just recently, and I made this piece that I use for my live performances, but also can be installed in a gallery and played by any visitor to the space. That's me as a 16-year-old, as a um, 
I was really into punk and skateboarding and all that fun stuff. Living in London, Ontario was a little bit different back then. Um, there was problems that are worse now and there's problems that uh, were worse then. So there was a lot of walls around that you could kind of paint on and get away with. and uh, it, was, it was a fun time for people to interact and work with each other and, and do some different kind of work. Um, this was actually the old Beale. I don't know if anybody here went to Beale, but they, they have their annex there. Uh, they had a separate annex, actually, ex like an exterior to the building. And it was its own structure, and um, it was kind of a different thing back then. And they let us paint on the walls before they bulldozed the old annex. Um, and then I was trying to do these like graffiti kind of characters related to certain things. Um, but I had this like comic book story I was working through, and I was painting these things around that were supposed to be the pages of the comic book and the figures in the story that I kind of actually stopped paying attention to the story after a while because it was kind of holding me back from making art. And But it's always been kind of a theme throughout all my work, and it's kind of come back a lot more in the last maybe five, six years. Um, I was taking garbage from the street and putting it on things, putting it back on the walls of the city, um, I was working with some friends that I met around the way um, on some collaborative artwork too at the time. So it was like painting, drawing, different work with words written in. Um, so there was communication, kind of back and forth with each other in this. Um, growing up in going to punk shows and stuff, the way that people were communicating then was through zines. Um, this is a collaborative one with. Uh, Mark Bell, Peter Thompson, and myself made around, um, I think this one maybe was around like 96 or something. Um, we would have these meetings and people would have, they would be like people doing break dancing and rapping and doing this kind of artwork um, and just meeting each other. And through this stuff, kind of networking started to build in southwestern Ontario and Montreal artists would come and we'd all talk about different things and, you know, get together outside of that and started building kind of a network. It's another collaborative piece. Um, it's me with my friend's dog. And I, I, got, I was really into making helmets and masks. Uh, there's Paul right there. He he was sort of like the king of like that underground punk scene with the, with the shows and all that stuff. And he owned a record store downtown on Richmond Street. And we, had, we, we took our class together in high school. And then at the end of... Uh, high school, he turned his uh, record store into an art gallery. He started showing our work. A lot of people from the connected scene, like different people who were doing album covers for punk records at the time, or hardcore records were coming and doing exhibitions there, people from New York. Um, people who are kind of important right now were showing in his space back then, and we were making connections. And then through that, the people who were showing in London ended up getting these shows with these other artists, but in New York, San Francisco, and this kind of thing. So that led to making these communications. These things happen. This is like another one of those jams. Um, so, yeah, the other thing is I I make rap music. I rap, and along with the instruments, I play, um, I play Game Boy, and I rap over the beats. And People almost people call it almost like a goth rap album, which is weird, because I never saw myself as a goth person or whatever, but it's it's kind of darker. Um, and so back then we had great distribution. This was before MP3s kind of killed everything. And uh, this was put out on a great label from Halifax. That, uh, and then later on, this label sp spread it everywhere. You know, we, people would buy CDs everywhere. So this, these albums went to Japan and Europe and all this stuff like that. So we had no problems back in the day selling, you know, a couple thousand albums. Um, and uh, so this is like the vinyl remake of the Bending Mouth album in France. Okay, so yeah, sticking more stuff up, finding garbage, finding fabric on the street. Halifax, there's a, there used to be like a plethora of garbage. I, I lived in the North End and it's considered like the bad end of town and there was always so much fun junk everywhere and we were making a lot of art and putting it on things like just picking up cool pieces of wood and garbage and, and different things. So I went to Brazil too. There was these artists, there was this artist I really wanted to paint with, actually two guys, they're twin brothers. Um, they're called Os Gemios, and um, I was following the work of, or I was interested in slash kind of participating slash kind of met a lot of people um, who were involved in this mission, San Francisco mission area, 
movement of kind of outsider slash uh, graffiti work kind of stuff that they were doing. Um, and this one guy, Barry McGee, had gone to Brazil and taught, they met these two twins and kind of taught them, a f you know, a few things about graffiti or whatever. And they were, they were on their way about, you know, doing very interesting stuff. But after meeting him, it's sort of like they, they changed their direction quite a bit and they were making some pretty unique stuff. So I was a fan of his work and knew, you know, we had a bunch of mutual friends. And then through that, uh, I was invited to come to paint with the twins. Yeah, that says in, in Brazil. So what, how I actually got to go there was I moved to Halifax because I was really interested in the hip hop scene there. Um, so, and I had some friends who were involved in doing work on things outside who had moved to Halifax. And so I just decided I'd go visit it, went to NASCAD and fell in love with it and then decided to move there. So I moved there, and then from there at NASCAD, they offered me um, an exchange with the school in San Francisco, and I had my application done, received some grants, done all this work to move out of Halifax to go to San Francisco, and right then they canceled the program. The school in San Francisco canceled the program, so I was left with like no apartment, some money, and this time I was gonna, you know, I was gonna get credit for all this stuff. I hadn't decided what I was gonna do the, the next year. And then I was given this bad news, went to go check my emails, and then there was an invite to come to Brazil. So I went back to the exchange guy and I said, I got invited to go to Brazil. And he's like, do you wanna go? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you wanna go to San Francisco still too? And I was like, yeah, of course. He's like, if you can make a presentation and show it to the faculty, you can do whatever you want. Because they backed out of the deal and we feel that you, you know, you know, if you can come up with like a kind of a curriculum and a, and a goal to, to achieve, you know, you can go out there. So I made up this thing that was like, I want to go there, I want to paint with the twins, I want to do all this stuff, I want to come back, and I want to go to San Francisco after. And I was going to do that, I did that in over like a six month period of like Christmas and then the semester and then summer. But um, my goals were like I had to, there was certain gallery people I wanted to meet, there was a certain uh, amount of things I wanted to paint, and I had to, my goal was to, establish a relationship with a, a gallery in San Francisco that felt like a good fit too. So it was kind of an interesting way like, that actually got me showing too. And this was like, after you know, a little bit of a discussion with the teachers, they were like, you can do this, you know, so, so go. And uh, so I got to go and it was amazing. This is one of the guys, Two Mex, he's from a band called Of Mexican Descent. And so he's a pretty, he's a really cool guy. Um, I just got his number from someone else and my friend was like, hey, go stay at this guy's house. And I was like, who is it? He's like, it's my buddy Alex. And I was like, okay, cool. So I call Alex. And I'm like, Alex, what's up? I'm coming to LA. Can I stay at your house? I didn't know it was two Mex at the time, like one of my favorite rappers. And he's like, yeah, uh, Marcus gave me your number. And he's like, well, what do you do? And I was like, well, I, pa I paint on stuff and I do things like that. And he's like, well, Marcus was supposed to paint my bedroom. So if you come, I'll let you stay at my house if you paint my bedroom. And I'm like, okay, cool. So... I take a Greyhound to LA, he picks me up, he's like, do you want to meet Cypress Hill? And I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. So they, they take me, I don't even know who these guys are, like just crazy gangster looking guys. Um, and then we go to this chop shop, you know, where they're like taking apart cars and all this stuff like that. And I was like, oh wow, this is awesome, I'm gonna meet Be Real from Cypress Hill, this is amazing. So we go there, of course Be Real isn't there, but his, his like low rider, you know, the low rider cars is there. And he's like, they're like, oh, I'll be real, you know, well, he's not here, but these guys are like working on his car. And uh, I didn't get to meet him, which sucks, but I got to see his car and he has a plaque on it that's, or like a framed thing that has like the medical marijuana thing. He's like, I can smoke weed because I have all these conditions in it. And uh, it was pretty cool. And his license plate said Black Sunday, which is like the album that they blew up the, on the Insane in the Membrane song. Anyways, that's important to me. So anyway, I, I painted a whole bunch of stuff in Tumex's house and they ended up, they were supposed to stay two days and then they ended up staying two weeks. And, uh, and I've gone back continually, continually. We've, and we've become really good friends and we've toured together, played crazy shows in like Hawaii and all over the place and done really amazing stuff with this guy. They've become like some of my best friends. So the collaboration stuff started happening in galleries more where we were working on each other's work. Um, all making marks over each other's stuff, trying to not have egos about when someone goes over nice marks you like. 
Um, so we would throw these shows and sell alcohol and have bands come through and we were just raising money for actually Four City to make things happen. Um, and it was actually at this time I met Susan. So Susan came to one of the shows there. There were these crazy little shows. Um, they basically gave us, this was the closet of the old Four City Gallery, um, which was like the back storage room. So they were like, clean it out, have your shows, have fun. So we were in there skateboarding around and just kind of making work and having a good time. Um, and in Brazil, I'd learned how to use, I wasn't using just spray paint anymore. I started using these rollers there because they didn't have enough spray paint. They would fill in all of their work with using paint rollers. So my, my work outside started taking on this kind of look too, where I was using the rollers more as opposed to spray paint. And I really enjoyed working with the textures and how, they, how it really brought out those things. Um, yeah, this is some stuff uh, on the train line in, uh, in San Francisco. This is that guy, uh, I don't know, I guess you guys were watching that movie in your class, uh, Barry McGee's uh, uh, signature out there. Um, so everywhere I was going, actually when I was out there, it was right around when Margaret Kilgallen pa passed away. So um, there was a lot of like, I was supposed to meet him and do some fun stuff or whatever. And then the friends were just like, no, you can't because Margaret had passed away and stuff. So um, this is some subway tunnels in, uh, in California we were painting in. Um, and then back in some warehouses. And then finding objects on the street and then turning them into art pieces. Often I'd go back in the daytime to get pictures of things and then find out um, material on the way. So this is around 2004 or so. And this is me using the paint rollers, um, but on a surface that I was using as a painting like to show in an art gallery. And then um, I got I got to go to this trip in uh, in Cuba. Actually, uh, I met this lady who was the manager for this rap group in Cuba called Doble Filo, and it was this political rap group. And she was like, "Come and do graffiti or do artwork for them that they would like, um, and you can stay for free in Cuba for a month, and everything will be covered. It'll be a great trip. It'll have a fantastic time." They know your work, just come and have a fun time. So I went there and uh, about two days into it, everybody was being really weird. And they were like, the band's broken up and we can't take care of you. And uh, you have, we have no way to, you know, everyone's quarreling and you have nothing to do. So you just uh, go take care of yourself. And I didn't have any money. So we just lived on the street in Cuba for a month. We just like borrowed some backpacks and just hiked around and slept on the front of storefronts and kind of just asked people for food and just were homeless for like a month and it was warm and pretty nice and I think I saw a ghost and it was really weird. It was crazy, it was insane. And here's a cute dog in a bag. Um, he's alive, people liked him, he wasn't anything else than that. It was just, that was just so he didn't poo in the bus. But yeah, and then, yeah. So we're getting around, we're hitchhiking, doing just fun stuff and um, really absorbing the culture, saw a lot of um, kind of voodoo related stuff. And this is some of the graffiti that was done by uh, people involved in those beliefs, kind of uh, lots of different amalgamations of a few different religions kind of smashed into different things. Just like very interesting walls and surfaces around, around, around uh, Cuba. Um, and then the, all of a sudden I found out that the twins were there from Brazil. They had come to Cuba and they, so they painted, but they were there basically a month before me and had painted in all these really cool spots. So I started just traveling to find where, they were, where their stuff was. So I would go and um, be like, oh yeah, they were there. And then someone would be like, yeah, they went to this town after. So we'd travel to that town and find more of their stuff and uh, paint in that town too. Because I, I was painting a lot on, on the walls there too. But just asking people, you know, just like, hey, can I do a thing here? They're like, yeah, that's great, cool, go for it. Um, and then at the end of the trip, like basically the last three days, the band got back together. And then the last day, they're like, do you want to do the artwork? And I'm like, well, I'm going to do it. You know, okay, it's going to be in the music video, okay. So this is kind of a painting. I started making these sort of more texture field paintings. 
kind of influenced by a lot of the stuff I was seeing in Cuba and Brazil and the different walls and like this kind of stuff right here. Like, like that, you know? Those kind of things were like inspiring this. Um, a little bit more to the future after that, a couple years later, um, after meeting Susan through some of the Forest City stuff and then hanging out, um, we had a show, Susan put together a show actually in the art lab. We were all, everyone, everyone was kind of painting on skateboards and I just painted right on the wall and people were coming. And it was really interesting because uh, we had, we'd be told, okay, we're gonna have this show, it's great, and started building some surfaces and getting ready for things. And then I remember this was kind of funny because we invited all our friends who could skate. Hey, everyone would come, we're gonna do this funny show at Western, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be anarchy. And then I think the day before we set up the show, they come and someone had waxed the floors. So you know, with a waxer, so everybody was just sliding everywhere. It was like really weird. I remember, like, I don't really even skateboard anymore because whatever, but I remember just doing these amazing like wheel slides that would go on forever. It was just like so weird, um, but it was cool. But it, people were like going up the ramps and then coming down and just wiping out because the floor was so slippery and they're just like, <laughs> yeah. but it was cool. Um, yeah, and then, um, so sort of, incorporating some of the ideas of found work and this this is a show we had at Museum London called Pulp Fiction. You know, started using light and shadow and interacting with the shadow with painting on the wall kind of thing, which was sort of a theme I followed a little bit for a while with a few different pieces. And then, so more new albums, this is another album cover. Uh, and then touring in Europe with this bad boy right here. This guy, is Fritz the Cat is his rap name, and he used to work for Vice magazine. Uh, that's me with uh, a mustache and long hair. <laughs> and so we, we made this seven inch record together. Um, and then my friends from LA ended up being in um, Paris. So we were playing shows with them and we played a lot of shows with them in Europe and stuff too. Just happened to be there at the same time. And then, hey, we'll hop on your shows if you, if, you know, and you can hop on ours. And we just trade shows like that. and make new connections and new fans or whatever you want to call it, people who appreciate the music. Um, and then playing a lot of, of a lot of punk squats and a lot of activist spaces and stuff. So this is in uh, Switzerland, playing at a punk squat there. They had performance spaces and like lots of different things and if they just kept paying for the heat and hydro, they could just be there. Uh, there's like a legal way to squat a space. You have to be living there without telling anybody for a short amount of time. Like I think it's like a month or so. And then after a while, you have to prove it that you were living there for that long, and that you've got the water working and stuff, or something like that. So these kids, this this uh, lady right here, every year I went back, she'd have a new squat, and it would be like, now we're taking over. Like one year's a school, now it's a castle. Like it was super weird. And then this is in Spain, uh, just painting on weird objects in Spain, having a lot of fun doing that. Um, and then another album cover. Um, and then, yeah, so I did, uh, I started doing a bunch of residencies and like applying for stuff. And uh, I had this residency at this place in um, Halifax called uh, Robert Street Social Center. It's like a queer zine archive activist hangout space. And it was really cool. And uh, we made some, we made some really cool zines out there like silk screen zines, uh, and then these are my friends who are helping us dry the zines over the heater there, you can see. Um, and then this is where you stay, is in this like little shack in the back. So yeah, around that time, 2008, 2009, and so these are like circuit bent, which is like you go in and you just prod around on the circuit with some wires until it makes a funny noise, and then you solder those bits together, and then you've got an instrument, and then you put in a button, and it's great. So. Um, this is like, this is where that piece I showed you at Banff, this is kind of like where this stuff all, all began, like exploring these different things. But it sounds like old video games with like strange toy noises over top. Um, doing a lot of, I did a lot of zine fairs. This is kind of like what the one will look like in Halifax. And you go there and you meet all these like cool people who are making books. And this is like a weird printer we had called a Rezograph printer. And um, this is in Victoria. We were, we were working with this printer. It's like super rare. Actually now a lot of people have rediscovered them um, and started printing on them. But I, I 
I kind of think it's this guy, Ryan Thompson, who sort of started the craze. Um, and it's this weird, weird way of printing. I don't, it's like soy-based ink on a, the paper, it makes these templates out of paper. And someone told me that the paper's made out of banana skins or something like that. I don't really know how much of it I believe, but it's really weird. It's a really weird printer. And I've got one of the zines here, too, um, made out of that uh, thing. So this is just playing house shows, playing the Game Boy stuff. Just wanted to throw in some pictures. Oh, yeah, I made this mask that has a microphone inside so I could play all the instruments um, what, without holding a mic in my hand. Um, and then through, yeah, so through playing lots of shows in Europe, you meet other Europeans and they want to work on music with you. And I started this uh, working relationship with this guy called Funken right here. This guy, he's an, he does video promotions for animations, but he also makes amazing music. And uh, so we have this band together called Awards. And um, so yeah, this is the tour for our last EP that was released. And uh, it was a combination of me using my circuit bed instruments with rapping and him playing like guitars and synthesizers. There's him playing guitar and stuff. So. Um, yeah, this is these shows are in Switzerland actually. There's this guy from Chile, and he comes to our shows. He flies to Europe to see us play, and he takes photographs. He takes amazing photographs. Um, and then okay, so yeah, this guy right here is my friend Craig. He's amazing. Um, so through touring in California and touring with Tumex and all those guys, um, I befriended these guys. They came to an art show of mine. They'd been buying my records for a long time. I knew of them. They'd been talking to me on MySpace. So I had this other tour through California, and they were like, come to the ranch and see us. So I got a drive. They sent a guy to come get me. I was stranded in Fresno, California, and they sent a guy to come get me, and they brought me there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to see Craig and go to the ranch. And it turns out that it's, these guys are multimillionaires. Uh, they live on a reserve and they own a casino. And they're really into skateboarding and underground rap and they're like the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. And like it's just, they own this wicked place and all my friends were there. Like, you know, every, everyone would come and drop by and, and we would tour together and do all these different shows and stuff. And Tumex and those guys were working with them and I was working with them and my friends from Florida were working with them and it was a really cool, Interesting thing. This is Bluebird writing here and Craig skateboarding in the background. Um, just pretty interesting stuff. This is like a, a project, sorry for the small picture, that, but Craig, um, Craig helped put this one out. Um, it was like a hard book, hardcover book with uh, like a seven inch record and a download card that you plant and it grows flowers. And just, they, they were like, what kind of project do you want to make? I was like, I said the most insane thing. Hardcover book download card that grows flowers and vinyl that's blue. And they're like, no problem, here's the money. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, can you also buy me a microphone? And like, you know, and uh, yeah, sure. So it's cool. Um, yeah, and then doing artwork. So this is kind of, this is kind of what one of my studios used to look like. Uh, this is a place I lived on, Dundas Street, and it was just, I would just, I just live kind of in between all my work all the time. So I'm like circumventing stuff, doing things, you know, there's the zines back here, just kind of right in the middle of all my work is how I work best. And uh, this is your loop station now, right? So, yeah, sorry. Me Megan has the loop station now and she's doing better stuff than I could do with it. Um, I was doing more residencies. This is a cool residency in uh, Oakland, Oakland, California at a place called Lobot. Um, this is one of the parties at Lobot where I made this helmet people wore it and jumped around. And then, uh, yeah, this is like this publisher in um, France called uh, Les Darnier Cree, where um, they publish some work of mine. Uh, they do all 100% silkscreen art books made by this guy, Paquito. And uh, he just kind of takes your art and then like messes with it and then silkscreens it and makes these weird books. And they're really amazing. So yeah, Lola Fest, which was a, an event that used to happen. You guys know Paul Wald, right? Who was here um, a little bit ago. So he's a friend. And he was putting on this great festival that lasted, I don't know how many years. I think it was just three, three or four maybe. And it was a, it was a really great festival. He was bringing in like some really amazing world-renowned people and teaming them up with some local people and bringing in great bands. But the same show had Yoko Ono, 
I don't know, everybody. Like, there's tons of tons of people in it. Like, it was it's pretty interesting. So, yeah. And there's some, some work I started using. Uh, found, as much as I was, like, finding stuff and, like, gluing it to surfaces and, and this kind of stuff, I started actually scanning in all my ob all the ob objects I was finding. So I started scanning them in the computer because I was, I don't know, I started becoming really, like, I didn't want to ruin the objects by working on top of them, but I wanted freedom to mess with them because I found them like inspiring textures and stuff. So I started scanning in objects and messing with them in Photoshop and putting them in arrangements and then printing them, printing them out. And through this weird way, was transferring the, the images onto wood and then like painting on the wood. And the objects can kind of remain as their own thing still. Yeah, just some more work, different examples of stuff. Started doing a lot of stuff outside again. This is around 2000, and, this is probably 2012 we're into now. So we, we got the space actually um, before DNA moved in and they let us have this crazy installation show everywhere in the whole space. It's pretty fun to do. These are some collaborations from my friend Matt Field and I. Um, Matt Field's a really great Montreal painter, but or he's actually from Saskatoon originally, but lives in Montreal. And it's it's such a funny thing because it's it, he gets a lot of attention in Europe and he gets a lot of attention in New York and stuff, but no one knows him in Canada. You know, he's, he's a great painter, and, and now he's doing this very minimal work right now that's just really caught on uh, a lot in in New York and Europe for him. And uh, so yeah, we've we've he was part of that kind of network of people who uh, involved in the underground hip hop and rap stuff. So. Um, yeah, and then this is that in inflatable piece that was in DNA, or the old pre-DNA space. Um, and then we had this show uh, at Museum London uh, called LO Today that was kind of um, an expanded version, in a sense, of what we did at Michael Gibson Gallery. It was myself, Jamie Q, Jason McLean, Billy Burt Young, Mark Bell, Amy Lockhart, and Peter Thompson. Am I forgetting anybody there? No. Okay, yeah, so it was like a, it's a whole crew of people that were doing stuff at the time. And then, yeah, this is, I'm back on tour again and I'm painting inside squats that I'm staying at um, in Europe, doing more collage work. And then, remember the guy I had with the big printer up the stairs thing? So he, he actually converted his van into a moving gallery and everything, the walls were all metal and he had all these frames that had magnets on them and you could stick your art on the inside. And so he's in Victoria, so he would drive around to different spaces and show the art. So that was the first exhibition. And um, so I got to paint the outside of it, outside of the van. Every, every artist gets to paint the outside and do the show inside. And then he makes a zine out of the work. So he's selling your zine, he has your work on the wall. I had instruments in there too, so it's sort of this like noisy, weird thing. And he, became associated with a lot of the music festivals there. He's had artists from Japan, um, all over the place. The, it's called Outer Space, is the name of his project. This is like an old like picture disc I did, you know, where the, the pictures are in the vinyl. And so they, they were like, come to our store, come to our store, you gotta come, these guys were like, come to our store after your show. And I was like, okay, cool. So we went there, and it was like they had, on, on their sign outside was just like, one of my records screwed into the wall. Which the, and they're like, isn't it great? And I was like, yeah, but it's wrecked. But that's fine, I guess, you know? <laughs> it was really weird, but cool. Um, and then, so that there's the same record in the background, not destroyed. And then this guy is like holding one of my, I don't even know how they got this vinyl. Like those, they were made in Germany. There was like a couple copies and went out of print. These guys got it early. I don't know. So they're into some good stuff. They were like, this wall is just, yeah, so many great vinyls. Um, yeah, just did kind of like a book signing hangout. That's me trying to say origato, like thank you in Japanese. Um, and then my friends were shooting a music video. So just like, just I just wanted to show you guys examples of different things that go on. This is my friend Bluebird that I from Florida that I rap with. And he did a whole set where this girl here was doing interpretive dance to his rap which was really interesting. So he was affecting his vocals, running them through all these machines here. And then she was just like going crazy. It was amazing. And then this guy back here, Shabit, he's from Japan, but he comes to London and plays shows and I tour with him when he comes and stuff. He's like, 
I can't even understand a word he says, but you can just feel what he's saying. I don't know, it sounds kind of weird, but he just like raps all amazing, and you're like, wow. I don't know, it's really great. And so he was doing that, and the dancers were, he did an interpretive thing too, so Bluebird and him did it, and it was really amazing. So they seem to have like a pretty cool understanding. So I had lots of exhibitions in Japan um, on this tour, so some of them was just like tacking my work to the wall and hanging them. And then, like these are the guys who promoted, the, these guys booked the whole tour. They're called Grand Grandma Records, but they like rap. This is like another show that just like pinned up some of the stuff. And some of the stuff was in like really nice galleries too. It's just a weird mix. And this is like a music video, another music video they were shooting in this sandstorm in Japan. So sandy. Uh, and it says leaving. So yeah. Uh, I, yeah, and they painted on the outside of the store where they had the record nailed to it. So yeah, this is an exhibition uh, in Halifax I had at a gallery that no longer exists. It's called Parentheses Gallery. But um, it's one of my favorite spaces to show in. It was run by my friend Dave. It's a fun show to put together. I love Halifax. I I'm, kind I'm, of love that place a lot. So, And Dave's like this amazing art collector slash curator guy who's kind of lets you do whatever you want. He has a space. It's just like, go do the art. Just do whatever you want. So I don't think I'm hanging my artwork right or anything like that. Like I don't, I'm not good at hanging work like that's the thing actually I like about showing with Gibson is I can be like can you just hang this so it looks right you know but then sometimes I like to go in and just do messy hanging too so it's fun to do that this is a thing I painted in Halifax at the same time I was really tired in this picture but um, this is one of those kind of like sp spray paint hangout groups and then this guy so that's the guy who, who trades the uh, trade stocks and stuff um, and me <laughs> Uh, so he organizes this whole festival too, like that's the cool thing. Like he puts his energy into building, you know, creating money and getting these things, and then you know he does a music festival and a, a, an artwork festival, and he has art shows and sort of generates funds to make more fun things happen. And that that was kind of our goal, like all the time when we were hanging out. Like he's actually a lot younger than me, but he used to come over to my house when he was like 16 and be like, "I'm gonna be a millionaire, and I'm gonna buy all your art, and I'm gonna open a gallery." And he's not a millionaire, but he's got. He's making things happen, and it's cool. So I did some stuff for um, New. What was this one? This was a uh, the London. There was the Fringe Festival. Was it um, on Dundas Street? No, this is the Nuit Blanche, right? It's Nuit Blanche in London. So I had the awesome opportunity to have a bunch of artists come and be in my studio for about a month and just build work in my place, so I was just kind of trying to help them, uh, you know, realize their piece and figure out their thing and also be like, you know, this is an experience where you have like a limited budget of money, you know, what would you do, what would you make, so um, this first piece was done by this young guy who, um, a really talented dude, had some run-ins with the law and was in trouble and kind of was, someone said, hey, you should meet this guy, he's really cool and he needs some direction and stuff, so he started working with me, and um, this is a younger Beale student, and Megan, I don't have the piece in here, Megan did an awesome kissing booth for the show, so it was really cool, I hope that's okay for me to say, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, and this is, this is Steven here, um, he, he, he helps me out with a lot of my work, um, bigger pieces, it was nice to be able to work with him, um, this is me <laughs> launching into a wave. Um, this is kind of what it looks like though like, normally when we're surfing it's crazy storm waves. This is in Bayfield. And you got you have to jump off the pier at the end here you have to make your way out here. You have, to, you have to wait behind this thing because the waves will smash you off. But then you have to run out quick, jump in here and then catch some rides. This isn't even the biggest day. Um, most of the really big day. Yeah, there's some bigger stuff right there. Uh, yeah, these are some friends of mine. So this guy's amazing. This is a guy who surfs a lot in the lakes, Andrew. Um, he's a really talented surfer. This guy lives in Windsor, but he's from Costa Rica. And he like loves, he comes and surfs in the lakes. Um, there's Andrew again, shredding. This guy's from Brazil. So I always try and 
say my terrible Brazilian stuff to him, like as if I know, like if, if, as if I can speak any of the language. You know? But uh, yeah, so lots of people come from all around to surf when the swell is good. Uh, this is another festival I played at in Sudbury, um, playing the instrument and um, some Game Boys and stuff. I was there to paint this mural because uh, they had like a mural fest slash performance thing. So I was one of the artists who played and painted, which was really fun to do. And then this is a current piece right here. And then uh, last year, um, uh, we had this idea to have a show in, um, in Bayfield and have a show involve some kind of a nautical theme. So uh, a friend of mine, actually the guy who invited me to Brazil had given me this book, and in the book he had researched. Um, <coughs> have you guys ever heard of Kilroy? You know the old graffiti character Kilroy. Kilroy was here, um, so he gave me a book and actually found out who the original Kilroy was. And uh, so, and I was really inspired by it. I thought it was really great. My dad had. Uh, my dad was actually he's from Glasgow, and he was on. He was in the Merchant Navy. And he'd seen the Kilroy face, and he'd always tell me about Kilroy. And, you know, when I was a kid, he'd be like, oh, yeah, Kilroy was this. And then we, he had an old boat up in Bayfield, and I was making all these kind of connections. So I made these paintings based off of the nautical flags and the, and the alphabet of it. And it spells out, I was here, like kind of inspired by Kilroy, but also maybe as a message, maybe something my dad would say, you know, because he, he passed away just like soon around then. So, like, it, this is the letter I, W, A, S, and this is the H, and then this is E, and then I put the R in there, and there's another E. So it's, it says I was here, um, in kind of my way of working. So, so these are all, like, just parts that have nothing to do with the face. Like, these are, like, from a toy truck or whatever in different bits. And, so I've been cutting them all up, and sort of sticking them together with tape, and then taking them. Actually, I did. I did my first one at Banff, but now I'm working at Beale on these uh, plastic mold things, where you put in a sheet of plastic and it heats it up, and then you pull it down, and it molds over the the surface. So it's kind of been a fun way to make these kind of things that show back to old kind of Halloween masks that I would wear. You know. Not just at Halloween, you know, when I was a kid, I loved those things, you know, Bobo Fett mask or whatever, you know, running around. I love those things, and I actually have a little collection of them, so this is kind of like my own version of those. Um, there's some more, too. These are the ones I made at Banff. I made these ones at Beale. Um, and then this is uh, kind of more current painted work. Um, and then, so yeah, right here we have, like, this is the most recent stuff I've ever shown, because I showed it like a month ago, at, at uh, Michael Gibson Gallery. So these are, again, we were gonna do a show again this year in Bayfield, and we wanted to kind of follow sort of something involving the region or, you know, nautical themed in a sense, or using materials. So these are all from sales. Like all this stuff is built out of, cut out of sales or the bags that hold them the sails, or um, also even like this red part was sort of a shelter that we used on the boat. It was kind of like a similar material to the sails, but you'd pull it out and it would be like a shelter to keep you from the rain. Uh, so we were going to have the same show in Bayfield, but I ended up making a lot of, quite a lot of the work and it just didn't work out, so we just turned it into a solo show in the gallery. So. Um, yeah, here's the, this is the new stuff I made out of all these chopped up sails, um, and I've there, there's a couple additional pieces, but most of these I say like 85 percent of all the material in here I've used since I was like a young kid and wanted to cut up forever. Like I spent so much time up in Bayfield, like because my my dad's boat would always break. It was like this old old boat, and he, he acquired it, and it was always breaking and falling apart. So I would actually be there drawing all the time and like looking at the sails, maybe like hoisting up the sails. And I've always wanted to, I always thought about them, you know, as just interesting textures or, um, you know, having interesting elements in them that I would like to involve in my art and now. And then here's some other kind of current work where I'm doing my drawings, but using an airbrush. It causes mistakes that I really enjoy working with um, and like 
creates like an unexpected element to it and I kind of work with it and I have to deal with it. It's a really fun way to work actually. So yeah, that's the end of the slide.